How is everyone today? It's Chris here from techtablets.com. I have in front of me the Pipo W3F. Now this is more of a kind of Surface 2 clone tablet that's running 2 gigabytes of RAM and a Bay Trail Z3735F. Just going to go over here quickly the benchmarks here that I've done of the internal drives. This is the C drive and you get around... Let's have a look, you get, I think it's about 20 gigabytes free. Just under, so you get around 19. I've just moved over a few files and demos, clips, whatnot. So you round about 19 gigabytes free. You have a four gigabyte partition, I think is the Windows recovery partition. So that's not actually too bad. This is only a 32 gigabyte eMMC drive. These are the speeds of it right here. It's a Hiinx drive, so it's a proper brand name. And the speeds are quite reasonable there. The uh, 4K read is uh, quite high on the high end for these drives, which is uh, 18, which is around some of the highest figures I've seen, around yeah, 18, 17. And the write rate's okay, and the sequential write of 83 is quite good for these drives. Uh, now, I see it on my unboxing video that it is a USB 3 port, it turns out it's only a USB 2 port. I think the USB 3 port is in the W3 version, the first model. This is the cheaper edition that only recently came out. So you can still get around 40, almost up to 40 megabytes a second. Read and write. This is a uh, SanDisk USB 3 drive here, an extreme one. So I managed to get those speeds there, which I think are quite reasonable. And the E... Sorry, the uh, micro SD card, you can get around 24, 23 megabytes read and write. Uh, this is a slower one I'm testing at the moment, so write speeds are only about 17, but um, it's still still okay, a little bit on the slow side, but you do have that USB, full-size USB 2 port now, which is really good. So the overall build of the tablet, I'm really impressed with it actually. This is my first Pipo machine, and it is really solid. There, There is, uh, there's no kind of, opening of the case or anything it doesn't look like it's going to start to open up like the Onda V116W in terms of build quality this is miles ahead uh, it has that metal backing plate on it too and just the, the, the plastic used is a nice kind of ABS style plastic which just seems quite solid and definitely a step up from the Onda V116W which was an 11.6 inch tablet I reviewed now I wanted to test out these two ports and see if you could power a external 2.5 inch drive. This is a Toshiba 2.5 one terabyte drive here to see if I can plug that in. Now this this port I could power it if it was needed which I have to do on the tech last X98 A3G. But just see if I can plug it straight in and if it's got enough power to be able to, to run that. Hopefully it should because this is more of a, a business focused model. And it's looking good, there we go. So that actually opened up my drive. So you can power from the micro USB port with an adapter, a full size 2.5 inch hard drive, which is really good to know. So you can plug in two hard drives. And uh, just to make sure, I will see if I can plug in also and run it. If it runs from the micro USB port, it should definitely run from the full size port. So I'll just test that now. Yeah, so that's not a problem either. That's running just fine. So that is handy. What I did find out, which is a negative against this machine, is that you can't charge from the micro USB port. It won't let you, so it's data only. Which is a bit of a bummer, but you can use the charge cable and you can also use both the USB ports on it and be charging at the same time, and use the micro HDMI out. They're all on the side here, and they give you plenty of room. So, using the adapter, you can still use the adapter, fit it in there. You can then fit in a hard drive, a USB stick, uh, something similar like this, but it'll fit in there without any problems, and, and use all that at once, and then connect in the charging, charging port, which is right here. So that's not too bad at all. So you never look at the overall quality of the keyboard, the keys are smaller, and it takes a little while to get used to typing on it. 
Uh, but it does have a few function keys there, so you can hold down function, get F3, two, F1, two, F12, uh, and then you have a number lock, and you can use the number keys there, which is nice. There also is the option there to disable the trackpad, so if you can push this button and have the trackpad won't work anymore, push it again and you can see the mouse pointer should hopefully be working there. And I've lost it. Disable it, and you see the mouse pointer there won't move at all. So that's nice. So if you are typing and you're constantly moving the cursor around, you can click that and then type on it. But overall, typing experience. The keyboard actually surprised me that uh, I was expecting worse quality. It's not actually too bad. It's just going to take a little while to get used to those smaller kind of keys there. I'm used to using a Logitech travel keyboard, a Bluetooth one, when I'm using Chinese tablets. I normally just plug this in. And that has you gives you actually it's a full sized keyboard with a nice good travel and the, but the travel on these keys is quite good and the overall the overall it, it's not too bad the quality at all it's just going to take a little while to adapt to those smaller keys but that's not bad the screen itself is quite bright it can dim down to almost what I would say would be too dim you can dim it right down to it looks like it's almost off and it becomes a mirror uh, and then the maximum brightness seems quite bright I'd say it's probably brighter than um, most Chinese tablets I've tested so far, probably not as bright as the Honda V116W, but it's it's up there in terms of brightness. I will actually do some gaming tests on this tablet uh, in another video, but I'll just quickly show you some images here that I normally show on these tablets, just some demo ones, just to have a look at the screen. Uh, sorry about all the reflections. It does reflect a lot the screen. Uh, it's daytime here too, so I've got the sunlight streaming in everywhere. But so you can see the keyboard and everything, I've kept the blinds open and haven't closed them. Uh, there seems to be no keyboard shortcut to the brightness, so if I want to increase the brightness, I'm going to have to just do that manually. There is no like shortcut there. Perhaps there is a shortcut, but I can't find it at the moment. So I'll go back to those demo pictures there and just show you. Uh, being an IPS screen, of course, it's got uh, really good view angles. and uh, It's the standard now IPS screens. We don't see any more TF, TFT panels, the older style panels anymore. So the, the colors are really good. This screen, it does seem quite sharp. It seems, it's definitely sharper than the Honda uh, V116W that I reviewed just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a 4K video clip. So it can actually play that just fine. So playing 4K is not an issue. 2K trailer. So that was maximum volume, and it does sound like there's definitely sound coming out of both of those two speaker slots you can see here, this is this one there on the left and the right. Uh, well later on I'll test the cameras and everything too to see how, how they work. So we've got a 2 megapixel camera up front and a 5 on the rear. Standard on these kind of tablets, I've seen the same configuration on, on a lot of uh, tablets just like the Cube i6 or the... Last X9 and Air 3G. Here's the cube. So you can see that the cube and they have a very similar kind of footprint there, even though that's a 4x3 screen. The um, size of them is quite similar. Uh, you have more screen real estate on the cube, being a four with a 4x3 ratio, so you get a slightly more screen there. And the uh, Windows button, of course, is working, that's working fine. The other thing I just wanted to quickly look at was the the size of the unit, the thickness, I should say, not the, the size. So the thickness is coming in around one centimeter. That is pretty much just a little bit over, so around ten point ten point two 
or 10 point 10.3 or so millimeters so it's just a a bit probably about two millimeters thicker than than the other retina tablets than the iPad air clones that I have been testing as of late and that thickness is probably around the same thickness as the Onda V116W okay so if you like the video please do give me a like that'll be helpful and very nice and kind of you to do that and do subscribe I'll have more videos on this tablet if you are interested in this if you're someone who's maybe looking for a tablet that comes with a keyboard uh, then this is probably one of the models to pick up it's very much like a surface 2 clone but I will have some more videos just do a little bit of gaming on the on the model just to test how that works and also see uh, 3d mark benchmark and a few other benchmarks I'll run. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on my next one. Bye for now.